Hello, Daily Vlog with Kyle Pounds. This day of the contiguous, it is December 9th. At 7.49 p.m., I'm just about to do my, uh, my ride for the day. Um, ride, I guess, number 12. So, uh, I love getting this riding going scientifically, um, because... Scientifically, what I mean is, um, if you do, if you all of a sudden do 100 miles a day, it's really easy to look at, go back and make charts and stuff off of that. Maybe there should be a new word, scienceo art, science art. It's a mixture between science and art. The art of using charts to explain science. I was watching this video. The other day, like yesterday, Joe Rogan had uh, Brett Weinstein on, and uh, he was showing this uh, this animation of the smallest unit that they have now, called the turnover or something like that, and um, the flip arounder or whatever. Because what it does is it, and it, it's, it has the, it, it, and so they made it by illustrated it by showing the surface of the globe, because we all know what the surface of our world looks like with all of the um, co uh, continents and then so then they twisted it so it did this twist it went in and then came back out again and it had these three I think it was like a triangle thing like these three twists had come in and come out again it was really wild I mean it's, but yeah it's but uh, I think people should make a habit of doing that that's what my timeline's all about that's what my whole website is all about rainbow crystal it's the idea of having a uh, having a website that uh, visually has the same principles as Google Earth, the way that we use Google Earth. We should file away all of our information, basically how the same visually how Google Earth does, and I think that's how they'll do it probably in the future. Because you can zoom in and zoom out really quickly, and you can remember uh, locations of stuff when they're inside of others, which are inside of others, and so you know that's why. So I try to fit in as much text as I can by making five columns across is ideal. And then you throw the text in and then you color code everything. And then you take out all of the extraneous words like the participles and the um, articles, the does and the us and the ands. And um, or turn the ands into the signs, you know, turn everything into a sign you can and color code stuff. So you don't have to add like pounds, you know, or kilograms because, you know, just from the, the, the font. And then you click on it, and then it opens up again to another thing. So it kind of, so it's basically the same thing as zooming in and out, like on Google Earth, you know? Like if you zoom in in Google Earth, in and out, you look into the world, and then you see that little dot is Colorado. You zoom in Colorado, little dot, Boulder. Zoom in Boulder, a little dot, my neighborhood. Zoom it in, then there's my house. And boom, three zooms, and you're from the world to my house. It's the same thing with, with my website. You see that little word, zoom it in, boom. It's that little word, zoom it in, boom, three in, and you've, you've gotten anywhere that you need in the world. I have every single book um, written before 650, written before like 700 on my website, I think pretty much. And um, you can get to any little saying that anybody ever said in 120,000 words, 127,000 words within a couple of, uh, within for my website, one hit to education, one hit to the book. And then, so you're on the book and then, yeah, just you would hit one, from the chapter you remember and then you know there's the word or the control f so anyways um what i'm getting at is um oh yeah so i made this really good page illustrating knowledge um because my my philosophy is if i can make a page showing something then i can then memorize that so my philosophy is even with history if i can make a historical timeline i could memorize everything in the timeline which means i could memorize everything that ever happened in the history of humankind or in the history of humankind's knowledge, in the history of the universe. And then I would memorize everything that happens in the future. I'd have prophetic powers. So um, so I, I made a chart like that to help me memorize my bicycling. Um, when I got that bike last year, I, uh, um, I wanted to know, and I, I think I was even maybe thinking of riding for a little bit. I went on like four rides with it. But I wanted to know how many watts I needed to do certain speeds and cadences and, and gears on my my um, computer trainer, my fluid trainer there. So 
on the gears that I have, I have the 50 by 11 and then it's 38 by 28, I think, which is fine. I mean, it's, it's way too low for when I climb, I'm cranking like this. But my idea is that once I get strong, I'll be worthy of that bike and I can, you know, spin up the hills. So, um, but, um, so I went and I would, I pedal for a, an entire minute at a certain cadence and then I do it like three times or I do it once and then I would look through the chart and if one of them, uh, whenever the ones didn't, didn't, didn't match up perfectly, I just redo those until they did. So I just read, I, so I did everyone like three times or something. And so I have exactly how many watts you need to do at 60 RPM. I think I started at 60, 60, 70, 80, 90, and hundreds. Yeah, five different ones, I think. And and then at least by maybe 50, but yeah, I think it was 60. And then, and then I have all the gears, even the dark, the X gears, which I didn't even number. It was like 20 gears, but then there's two gears because they were cross gears. Um, and they weren't worse on, on watts, by the way. And they weren't even loud. It was just what they recommended. You know, you don't want to go like big chain ring. And I think it was three from the highest. And, but I even, I, 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 I registered their numbers too. And, and so I have all of the Watts for all the gears at all the different cadences. And I did it color coded with, um, with fonts and the different, uh, numbers to show all the different, uh, you know, Watts and cadence and everything and speed and, and, uh, yeah, and then I linked it on my page, and then I go there yesterday, and I click on it, and it's the old version. It's the very first version that I made. It somehow got replaced. So I'm apparently I did some bonehead maneuver. I don't know how I did it because I would have, I would have, I know how I think I would have labeled the one original da 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 right, and then I would have had new or the official, and then I would have had it there, and they would have two or I, and I would have actually retired it, the old one, off to the other folder of old you know stuff and. So I don't know what the hell the goblins came, but that was like three days of full solid work. It was so much work and that would have made it possible for me to memorize exactly um, without even looking at the computer. I would have known how fast I was pedaling just from riding so much. And then I would have known what gear I was. And then I would have remembered in the chart and I would have known my Watts would have had all my Watts memorized at all time because of my chart, but I can't do it anymore. And I can't even rebuild the chart now. You know, it's like a lizard can't grow its tail back twice the same way because it'll just tear me apart to have to rebuild the thing. Even though I could rebuild it faster because I know how it looked, I'd have to do the test over again. And hell, fuck that. So I'll just use Strava. You know, Strava is good enough. Um, but that's just an example of how, how charts and knowledge, um, science and charts, science and art need to start working together more. Yeah, because that guy, Brett Weinstein, he's right. He's like, yeah, kids, uh, sometimes kids get it. And then you need to just let them go to the next level. And people can learn a lot quicker if you just show them a visual. A lot of kids are visual learners, or most people are visual learners. And, and now we have the technology. And so, yeah. Anyways, um, so, yeah, I rode yesterday for like uh, uh, six hours and 14 minutes. I was beat yesterday. Like yesterday was my hardest day, and they're probably going to get harder. Here's, this is the point. So yesterday I was thinking, well, before I went on the ride, I was thinking, oh yeah, I'll probably get stronger before I, I get weaker. And now I'm thinking, no, 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 no. I'm going to start to break down. My body's going to break down before I get stronger because for the first 50 miles of yesterday's ride, I was suffering. I was, um, I felt like ill, like sick. Like I was just about to get a fever, you know, like feverish and like something was wrong. But then I, you know, I kept eating that rocket fuel goober goo and drinking fruit juice and I guess watching, just keeping myself entertained, smoked a bunch of weed at one point, weed helps. And I had a second win and I carried it through and I finished the, the uh, hundred miles and six fourteen. But then, and at one point in the middle of the ride, I got super excited. I listened to John wick, uh, bullet shots fired song. And I hammered my brains out as hard as I could until I got an asthma attack. And then like, so I couldn't have any power and I was just going, <laughs> but, um, my max watts were like 214. <laughs> I am like, I, yeah, I cannot <laughs> go any faster than I'm already going. It was, I think it was because I had an asthma attack because of it. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I, but then by the end of the ride, I was shot. I could tell that I was, 
I was feverish. Like I hadn't been feverish in any of the other rides, but I was like hot forehead and achy. And the first time actually I had the idea of stretching my legs. I put my, and it's easy. You don't, you can, I should have been doing the stretch before because it takes no energy to do it. You just put your foot under your butt and it was excruciatingly painful and I done both legs. So I need to start doing that definitely between the rides. But yeah, I just slept all night and I went into the store cause I had insomnia. I got done with the ride at like three in the morning, but I was just laying there like, you know, I went into this to the supermarket and I got a, a Starbucks double shot espresso just because <laughs> and I drank when I came home and then tried to go to sleep. But yeah, I still had a little bit of insomnia, but then I went to sleep and, um, and, um, and I slept all day long and I uh, needed to sleep and it was wonderful. Oh, I love sleep when I need it. Yeah. I have the greatest job in the world, professional athlete. Um, the, the world's only streaming cyclist, very, 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 very important person in the community. Um, also all the other stuff on my website, but yeah, just from the streaming, you know, we really need to do the streaming to counteract this, the, the, uh, the game streamers and to make it mainstream writing all the time. So, but, uh, but yeah, um, you know, I got up and then I started, I, my stomach actually did the thing where, okay, we're hungry now. And right then that's when I had, so what I had to eat today was, um, this morning when I went to the store, I had like most of a bag, like three quarters of a bag of uh, potato chips. And I, and I think that was it I, that I had today. And then like half of an apple. And um, then I got up and I had two avocados, a banana, a protein drink. And after my ride, I had a protein drink, whey protein. Um, and I was going to have a can of beets, but I can't fit, couldn't fit it. So, um, is that really all that I had? I felt stuffed at the end of it. I'm probably going to get hungry. Um, so I'm going to have more goober, more of that goo, caramel goo. Oh yeah. And then, oh yeah, I had some, um, I had like, um, like four fifths of a, um, Boathouse Farms, um, Kiwi drink. I love those superfood drinks. If you drinking those superfood drinks, like Naked Drinks, Boathouse Farms, Odwalla, um, mixing, drinking those and then mixing those in with, um, the goose. And, uh, and then you try to fit in real food in between, like for breakfast, I'd have avocado and bananas and canned vegetables and stuff. But, um, yeah, that's all you need, man. And that's superfood. I mean, hot dang. Like if I had been riding right now in the same technology that I had 20 years ago, you know, like in my old Pinarello having to eat like sandwiches that I make and stuff and drinking. I, yeah, I don't think I could do it. I could not ride hundred miles a day. I'm not that fit, but I can, I'm getting, I'm getting all these boosts from living in the present day. I have a, I have a stiff bike. I've got all those videos I can watch of the superfoods. It's just, it's just like 44. I'm going to be 45 on the 27th of this month. So I'm 45, I guess. 45 is like the new 25, dude, because they just make it so fucking easy. The technology. So, and you know, it's motivation. Let me talk about motivation. Um, what's going to, what, what, see, that's another thing that would have made it impossible for me to do it now is I wouldn't have had the motivation under the same circumstances. Because when you're younger, you're motivated by like ego or whatever. I don't know. Um, and, and, or and just the, just the sheer like magic of being fit and being able to do that stuff. And, you know, living in the world and the earth, physical earth like that in your body. But, you know, but it gets more boring as you get older, but, um, but not if you throw in the, uh, the music and then the learning, the audiobooks. But, um, but as far as, yeah, motivation, um, um, yeah, if you want to cut out logistics, I mean, obviously if you want to be a pro athlete, you have to have, you have to not have a job and have a money and the gear and stuff to do everything, um, to make it the easiest way. But, um, but motivation, if you're just going to talk about motivation, um, for me, um, and I, I said this the other day, <clears throat> I'm motivated by streaming it, man. Like I'd be so much less motivated if I didn't stream it because I feel like I'm doing a job. I feel like it's my job. I can only be motivated to do something if it's my job. If I feel like it's a, a legitimate job that other people uh, look at as being a legitimate job, you know, like that's how I, 
that's how I feel myself in society. That's how I feel myself as a social human being. That's how I feel myself belonging is um, doing a job that is seen as a legitimate job and uh, and as a, as a good job, like a job that people wouldn't um, point at and say, oh, you know, this job is uh, of the reminiscent of the old world. You know, you need to like a like a middleman, you know, we're trying to get rid of middleman in the current day or like people do um, extraneous work, you know, or even you know, like lawyers, um, helping, um, um, prosecute against stoners and stuff like this, you know, like just useless jobs. But yeah. So if I can feel like I'm doing like a good job, then I'm motivated, you know, and that, that's all I need to, to be the best that I can be and try to be the, you know, the, get proud of myself and be the best that there is, you know? And so, um, and so, yeah, when I'm streaming all day, every day, I feel like that's a legit job because I feel like we're, uh, we're fighting against the game streamers. Uh, the game streamers have all the money, spend all the money, and they're the ones who are fueling this uh, consumeristic economy. Every few months, they pop out more games, then they have to pop out the new, the new PlayStation and stuff, and uh, we don't need to invest all of this time and money in new fantasy world that doesn't that's not connected to reality um we, if we're going to use this technology we should use it to recreate on google earth the ancient world to interest people in history and um and interest people so that we all have the same thing to talk about and so you don't have this little clump of ignoramuses over here talking about the the mythology of lord of the rings and over here it's the star wars people and over here it's the Star Trek people, and then you have the, you know, all this like fantasy stuff. We should all be talking about the same thing, the philosophers of ancient Greece and what really happened in our history. And so that we all feel like one happy, you know, family as a, as a country. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the counteracting of game streaming. Because if you're writing all day long, you could stream that instead of game stream, because you can only do one, you can't do both with your time. And, um, and then you learn, then you can learn. You can't, Listen to an audiobook while you're playing a video game. You can while you're riding a bike, and then you can talk about it after. So that's that's why I feel like I'm doing a legitimate job, and that's all I need. Boom. You know, I'm off to the races. Like if when I was 18 and I wanted to be a like a mountain bike racer, and I told my you know parents, oh, let's do that. If my parents had been, oh, there's a job, okay. I'd have been off to the races. But um, but you know, people, my parents, my dad was born in 1928, my mom in 1941. Silent generation people, uh, they, they were like, oh, no, the only way to, you know, get into college is to volunteer. And the only way to graduate college is to kiss this teacher's ass. And and then the only way to get any job at any company is by getting the job at uh, graduate from the college. Like it was just empty steps and hoops to jump through that didn't mean anything. And um, So how the hell did I start talking about that? I'm really high. Um, so yeah, I've talked long enough. I'm going to go ahead and I'm super motivated now. I was listening to some music. I felt really tired and really ill and, and hungry and stuff, but I just ate and, um, I'm having a little bit of a second win and I think I'm not going to hammer myself as much today. I'm just going to, I'm going to try to organize files on my computer. I think today's going to be my first day where I actually work on the computer while I ride and, uh, and just take it easy. And, and if I do that, I think I could do, uh, I could think I could do a hundred miles in about six and a half hours, probably. Um, it's going to be slower than yesterday and yesterday was 614. I'm slowing down. So yeah, maybe six and a half, but definitely under seven hours and I'll be able to do the whole month in under seven hours. There's not going to be a single day. It's going to be over seven hours, but, um, okay. That's enough talking. Peace out. See, woo. So true.